is an advertisement for milk. Accrington Stanley, who are they? Well, they are the club that's 11 points clear at the top of the conference and closing in on a return to the Football League. Here's Richard Ascot. Experience has taught me one or two things about this place. If you want to make friends here, do mention how well the team is doing. Do mention that the club is a founder member of the Football League. But whatever you do, don't mention that advert. If I didn't drink lots of milk, when I grow up, I want to be good enough to play for Accrington Stanley. Accrington Stanley? Who are they? Exactly. The milk advert. What a rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> what milk advert's that? See what I mean? What they do want to talk about, though, in the town's pubs is how Stanley are exactly. knocking spots off the rest of the conference. Really, really proud. Excellent. Really proud of them. Brilliant, really. They're doing well. No one expected it, really. Delighted. Absolutely superb. Doing a great job putting the town on the map. The fans have certainly got a lot to smile about at the moment after last night's 3-1 win against their closest challengers, Exeter. Aki are 11 points clear with the game in hand. We've got a good chance now. Um, start of the season, our, um, our main focus was trying to make the playoffs. That's now shifted since probably November. I know that the focus is trying to win the league. Next in the diary is a visit from the game's authorities in a week's time to check the club's ground is up to scratch for league football. The wage bill is, it compares with some in League Two. The chairman says they're ready. We have a very strict budget here and, uh, you know, we, we tend to really work to it. And, um, you know, we'll be no different until we get into the Football League. And the club that fell out of the league in 1962 is now very definitely knocking on the door to get back in. Yay! Richard Askham will us tonight. <laughs> Good luck to them. Hope they make it. Now, I don't know what your library charges... Barrett was 12 when he first watched Accrington Stanley. He's now 81, and memories of the club's demise in 1962 still hurt. It was grief. Everybody in the town was grief-stricken. They was hardly speaking to each other that they'd flopped. And some said they didn't get a chance that they were wanted to get out the league. It was a money problem. And... Uh, they couldn't pay up in time, so they sent in the resignation one day, rescinded it the next because they got all of the money, but they wouldn't accept it. Younger generations of Stanley followers sense it'll be an historic season. This fans team called the Accrington Stanley Ultras the passionate supporters. At last we've got a connection with local schools, we've got um, people are not ashamed anymore to say I'm an Accrington Stanley fan. Um, it's, it used to be the butt, as you know, lots of jokes. It was hard work growing up in Accrington as an Accrington fan with East Lancashire and Hotbedder football for Blackburn and Burnley and, of course, not too far from Man United and Liverpool. Uh, but now, now there's kids proud. A 13-point gap now gives Accrington Stanley a great chance of promotion, led by a manager ironically born in that year, 1962. I remember reading about it, you know, when I was a young kid and reading uh, books, you know, about the demise and, you know, uh, my, my dad used to tell me about uh, how, how they were a banker and a, on a fixed lodge coupons when they went through a purple patch. Um, and, you know, they had a, a very Scottish-influenced team. And, you know, the, the ones who remember and the older people, you know, as I'm sure you spoke to, will, uh, will remind you of that. And, you know, it would be nice to do it for them, but, you know, we're trying to do it for ourselves as well. The fans' game ended in a 5-1 win for Accrington over Liverpool. They'll hope the whole town is celebrating a much bigger victory in a few weeks. Peter Stevenson, Sky Sports. And you can see that game between Accrington and Morecambe from 7.30. That's on Sky Sports 1. Last month, good goal too. And top scorer Paul Mullin then secured the victory for them. His third goal in two matches, courtesy of a mix-up between Morecambe's on-loan keeper Stephen Drench and defender Darren Kempson. A bit of determination about them now and there's a bit of steel about them. Um, we work hard in training and we work hard in trying to get things right and they play to the letter I've asked them to do today. We knew how Morecambe had set up, um, you know, we knew what they'd come and, and, and try and do. Uh, we matched them for down the first half, got our goals, maybe sat back at the second half, but you know, I'm totally pleased with the win. 
and we were well in the game the first, you know, first 15, 20 minutes. But then the first goal goes in with a mistake in midfield, and then the second one will. Uh, there's no answer for that, I'm, I'm, and we're disappointed with that because we are better than that first half showing, uh, and second half we up the up the gear a little bit and, uh, and made Eccleston work. Uh, but you need to do that for 90 minutes, especially the position we are in. So it's very much a private battle at the top. Accrington, Stanley, uh, their lead now, as you see, 16 points. Morecambe uh, tying alongside Hereford and Halifax, but they've played more games, and Hereford obviously got a chance to narrow that gap against Accrington. Accrington well out in front, uh, 67 from 29 played. Walter Smith. Lead halfway through the first half, thanks to Andy Todd. His first goal in front of the Accrington fans since his arrival from Burton last month. Good goal, too. And top scorer Paul Mullin then secured the victory for them. His third goal in two matches, courtesy of a mix-up between Morecambe's on-loan keeper Stephen Drench and defender Darren Kempson. A bit of determination about them now, and there's a bit of steel about them. Um, we work hard in training and we work hard in trying to get things right. And they played to the letter I've asked them to do today. We knew how Morecambe had set up. Um, you know, we knew what they'd come and, and, and try and do. Uh, we matched them for down the first half, got our goals, maybe shot back at the second half, but you know, I'm totally pleased with the win. And we were well in the game the first, you know, first 15, 20 minutes, but then the first goal goes in with a mistake in midfield, and then the second one will, uh, there's no answer for that. I'm, I'm, and we're disappointed with that because we are better than that first half showing. Uh, and second half, we up the, up the gear a little bit and, uh, and made Eccleston work. Uh, but you need to do that for 90 minutes, especially the position we are in. So it's very much a private battle at the top. Accrington, Stanley, uh, their lead now, as you see, 16 points. Morecambe uh, tying alongside Hereford and Halifax, but they've played more games, and Hereford obviously got a chance to narrow that gap against Accrington. Accrington well out in front, uh, 67 from 29 played. Walter Smith hopes Gary Naismith can cement his place in the Scotland squad after earning... Carl Rice starred in one of the most famous advertising campaigns on television. A whole generation of school children grew up copying his famous words, can't do the accent, hear the words, Accrington Stanley, who are they? But all that was 18 years ago. And, surprise, surprise, where have I heard that before? We have found him, still living in the Northwest. Eleanor Moritz went to meet him. Milk! Ugh! Twenty in rush drinks! He was one of the most famous child TV stars of the time, and certainly the most frequently imitated. Well, won't it be good enough to play for Accrington Stanley? Accrington Stanley? Who are they? Exactly. 18 years on, Carl Rice visited Accrington Stanley Football Club today, enjoying renewed media attention. It reminded him of the good old days. Every single person that I'd walk past would recognise me from one advert, and it was strange, and that carried on right the way through all the acting that I'd done. It was, uh, was kind of like, uh, yeah, you're the kid off the milk advert, say Accrington Stanley for me. Carl was eight when he made the advert for the National Dairy Council. It led to bigger and better things. Roles in Holby City and other TV dramas yeah, such as Brookside and Bread, not to mention chat shows. I've done 20 episodes of a children's programme. Crikey. On Channel 4. <laughs> He also starred in the West End before turning his hand to script writing and stand-up comedy. But there was always that first role that came back to haunt him. I'd be going for massive auditions and, you know, getting some really good parts. And I'd been meeting some of the biggest casting directors in the country and they'd be like, so you was the kid off the advert. The advert was one of the most successful in television history. It was on our screens for seven years. And who did the best out of it? Well, the club here made £7,000 from the use of their name. Carl, on the other hand, was only ever paid £90 for it. But there's more to celebrity than money. And with Accrington Stanley's current form, Carl is toying with the idea of a sequel. Now they'll be in the Champions League final in a couple of years. That's what I'm hoping for. And then I'll get me money. Everybody that's interested in football, the advert did mean something to them because whether they thought it was a skit or a joke, to me it really doesn't matter because at the end of the day, people still talk about it. And the little boy with the milk bottle, they still remember him too. It was a milk advert. Uh, Ian Rush. They don't have a choice. Who? Oh. No, Accrington Stanley. Accrington Stanley. <laughs> Who's Accrington Stanley? <laughs> Accrington Stanley. Who are they? Exactly. Now nah, get off. Give me some. Get off. And can you say those immortal words for us? Which ones? <laughs> exactly. That's what I can't do it like I did anymore because I had that <laughs> the big <laughs> on the exactly. Exactly. Eleanor Moritz, Northwest Tonight.
Yes, I'll give it a go. Achrington. <laughs> Achrington. Can, can you do it? Mark of a good advert, though, when everybody remembers it, isn't exactly. it? I could do it in Ulster. Accrington and Stanley, who are they? You could do it in North Geordie, couldn't you? Accrington and Stanley, who are they? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> trouble is we can't do it in, in the original. No. Um, right, uh, well, that's, that's the lot from us. So... Uh, Biggest dressing room party for 44 years. Three points at Kingfield, crowned Accrington Stanley Conference champions. I said to the lads this morning, I got up, I was quite bubbly today, um, and I've gone into the breakfast and I've said, Come on, let's go and make history. And uh, you know, I think we have done, and I said, You know, these lads will go down, you know, in history as the ones who have took them back. In an action-packed game, Accrington Stanley's top goal scorer Paul Mullen scored seven minutes before half-time. <laughs> Drama midway through the second half when Woking were awarded a penalty. Rob Elliott saved, only for the referee to order a retake. Elliott saved again. And there followed a goal mouth scramble. Walking continued their attack, then handball on the line. No penalty. Nervous times for Accrington Stanley, who should have gone two up, but they still sealed their dramatic win. Obviously, you know, we were favourites to go up, but uh, when the day comes, you know, you've got to accept it, and uh, I've been a bit emotional. But, um, you know, hopefully we can push on now and go a little bit further. Accrington Stanley, who are they? Mocked a milk advert back in the 1980s. Two decades on, they're now preparing for life in League Two. Brian Swanson, Sky Sports. After going bust with debts of almost £63,000, six years later, the club were reformed. Accrington were elected to play in the North West Counties League in 1983. The year 2000, they were promoted to the Unibond Premier Division. A successful 2002-2003 season saw them win promotion to the conference and now back in the Football League for the first time in 44 years. Well done, Accrington Stanley. Wayne Rooney. Supporters and uh, I'm sure that uh, the last two home games, you know, will be a carnival atmosphere. Certainly the older fans, you know, obviously they're all delighted and the numerous phone calls we've had, you know, since, you know, the promotion was achieved is absolutely unbelievable. Now cricket and Australia. Been floating in and out of uh, Accrington's ground throughout the day and I'm joined by uh, Rob Hayes, who's the uh, club's chief executive. Uh, Rob, I suppose this is the uh, culmination of a dream for you, isn't it? It is. It's absolutely fantastic. Culmination of a dream for a lot of people, really. We, we, we've talked been so many points clear for so long and we just keep waiting and waiting. We couldn't celebrate until we knew it was mathematically impossible to be caught. Yesterday, fortunately, we got the three points that didn't. We could actually start to celebrate. You were at the game itself. It was a, a bit of a cliffhanger by all accounts. It was. It was nerve-wracking all the way through. And even when we got the goal, we still only had, to, we had the single goal advantage and we had to hold on at, uh, at times. But we did hold on. We got the three points and unfortunately we, we're here where we want to be today. And you had uh, two penalties which you saved as well. That's right. You saved one of the referee made him take it again. I think one of our players must have encroached into the area. That was no problem for Rob, really. He stepped up and, and did the same again. So what was the atmosphere like on the way back? I don't remember, really. No, no, I no, it was good fun, obviously. As I say, it's, it's relief as much as anything because the, the pressure we'd be in so many points clear. Everyone everyone wants to catch you, but to, to be able to get the three points and do it and say, yes, we, we've done it, we're champions. You've got the ground infrastructure here, and that's been, uh, been here for a while. It's a, a fine ground as far as the, the conference is concerned. It'll do, pro, do well in the league as well, I suppose. Um, what more will you have to do? Is there any work that, yet that has to be done now in order to prepare for the new season? There is just a bit some pieces, really. The, the main ground itself is OK. We need to make sure 
for rooms of control room for the the, for the ground control officer and uh, the first aid area for some spectators and some extra turnstiles really and that, that's about it really it's all, all small bits that we can get done and that's where I'm coming now and uh, <laughs> make a start on it <laughs> and in financial terms just, just how much of a boost will this be for Accrington Stan? It's a step into the unknown to be honest I mean it, it has been for, for several years now we, we went up into the conference and we went full time a couple of years ago and this, this will be the same again but whatever happens we'll make sure we don't spend more money than we've got coming in and, and that, that's, that's the way you've got to do it really for the long term future of the football club Yeah you've got to be financially prudent presumably though John Coleman will have uh, a lot of agents suddenly knocking on his door with uh, players who want to come and sign for him I think he was doing his wish list last night on the way home I think <laughs> he's got a long list of things that he wants to spend on players and facilities but we'll look at them and hopefully we'll be able to give him what he wants to, to carry on and take us further Of course you've got a game here tomorrow against Scarborough there'll be celebrations then but we won't see the trophy uh, till the following week That's right the 22nd we're, we're being presented with the trophy apparently against Tamworth so I'm, I'm sure there'll be plenty of people down tomorrow it's a bank holiday weekend they'll come on and, and watch the champions play football and then hopefully next week they'll come down again and, and see the trophy be presented to us and no doubt a party atmosphere as well I'm sure, yeah, every excuse now to party. We've waited a long while, as I say, for this moment, so we're going to make the most of it for as long as we can. OK, thanks very much indeed for uh, joining us there. Rob Hayes, the Chief Executive here at Accrington Stanley. Uh, I'll let you into a little secret. He's nursing a slightly sore head. <laughs> yeah, you would have thought it. And also, in celebration of Easter, he looks dressed like... Celebrations continuing here at Accrington Stanley, thanks to the fact that they've been promoted back into the Football League. I'm with a, a couple of chaps who've been watching Accrington or been involved with the club for a, a long, long time. They've seen the highs and the lows. I'll start off with uh, Harry Stevenson, who uh, you've been watching Accrington Stanley since uh, 1947 as a 10 year Old. That's true, that's very true, yes. The good times, the bad times, the Scotchmen, the different managers, the highs and the lows. And yesterday, the culmination, obviously, was a very emotional time for the club and the supporters uh, doing the championship with three games to go. A magnificent achievement uh, and a fitting reward for the, uh, the chairman and the manager. And having seen the club go out of business in the 60s, did you ever think you'd see this day? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Not until uh, things started to move again around about 1970 when Jack Barrett and them formed a committee. And we, at that time, of course, we had with no team, with no money, and with no ground, and with no players. So we started from scratch again at the grassroots, and we acquired this ground, which was a mud heap, and gradually transformed it because we had to fence it all off, build a temporary stand, and we... We, we begged and borrowed, we didn't steal, but we begged and borrowed timber and materials to, to form the ground. And the first game, I think, was 1970, when we played Formby and won 2 nothing. And I was working in Exeter at the time, and I travelled up overnight just to watch the game, and it was a, a marvellous achievement. It's a real fairy tale, isn't it? Because it is. It's, it's, it is ranks to riches, if you like. Just how proud are you of the team now? I don't think proud is the right word. <laughs> It's emotional. It's so emotional you can't you can't put it into words. It's uh, total fruition. Total fruition. It, it's fantastic. I can see a tear in your eye coming there. Right. <laughs> Thanks very much indeed for speaking Thank to you. us. Let's have a word with Tony. I mean, you've been involved with the club for a long time as well. Uh, I think it was 1974 when you, you, you got here as, uh, as physio. That's correct, yes. I came in 1974 through an advert that was in the paper for a first aid. And I'd been refereeing up to then and uh, I wanted to be involved in, you know, sports. So I came over, saw the, the then manager, Jimmy Hengsman, a very successful manager, may I say, you know, while he was manager. And I took the role up as uh, the physio, which I did for 18 years. Thoroughly enjoyed it, never in my wildest dreams thought that we'd ever get back into the Football League. But here we are today, back in the Football League. And for me, and I'm sure for all the fans and the managers, the players, it's a wonderful tribute to the club, uh, which is obviously a world-famous name at Crinton Stanley. Everybody that I've spoken to has, has had great praise for, for Eric Rowley, the, uh, the, the chairman, a man who's put his money where his mouth is. Oh, yeah, Eric's, well, Eric's, there's no doubt about it. Until Eric came, we were, like, on a little bit of a decline. Nothing severe, but things weren't just going right. Eric's come in and he's, well, he's just turned the club round and it's to his endeavour that we're where we are today. Plus, of course, the team and John Coleman, which I can't praise highly enough. John's done a wonderful job. There's some of us who thought, like you do over the football and you're following football, is John going to do it? You know, he's, he's done great for us. But will he be able to get us into the football league? Well, here I am, living proof. We're back into the football league. So John's proved us all wrong in that score. Like when we went into the conference, well, will we stop in the conference? We sure did, we did well, we nearly got into the playoffs. 
just just failed with Woking, who we owed one yesterday, so we got one over. I know it's not very hard, but I mean, we got one over on them yesterday for what they did to us down there in the league, because we, we just missed out on the playoffs. So at the end of the day, it's, well, br brilliant, brilliant. Okay, thanks very much indeed for speaking to us, gents. Uh, two very emotional chaps there. They've uh, been here, uh, seen it all, done it all, and uh, most definitely uh, bought the T-shirt. But uh, high emotions here uh, at Accrington Stanley because they are back in league football. Fraser's in and around Accrington Stanley getting reaction from fans uh, throughout the day. In the SPL... I think we have done, and I said, you know, these lads will go down, you know, in history as the ones who have took them back. Spent to life in League Two. The only person working in Accrington was the groundsman. Pretty much everyone connected with the club had been out celebrating Stanley's return to the Football League. And although there were clear skies, there weren't many clear heads. We have a game tomorrow against Scarborough, but uh, I don't know we're going to put a team out, you know, because absolutely, you know, they, they really enjoyed themselves coming home. And um, normally we don't drink on the coach, but, uh, you know, I think the manager you know, just let it down, seeing that they'd achieve what we set out to do beginning of the season. Paul Mullins' goal at Woking was enough to confirm Accrington's conference title win, which could spark a major boost for the club's finances. It's a step into the unknown, to be honest. I mean, it, it has been for, for several years now. We, we went up into the conference and we went full-time a couple of years ago, and this will be the same again. But whatever happens, we'll make sure we don't spend more money than we've got coming in, and, and that, that's, that's the way you've got to do it, really, for the long-term future of the football club. And for the fans who regularly come through these turnstiles, it still hasn't quite sunk in. It's emotional. It's so emotional, you can't, you can't put it into words. It's uh, total fruition. Total fruition. I've got a feeling that we'll do all right. I mean, all the teams that have gone up the last couple of years have done quite well. So uh, Stanley back in the Football League where we founded, uh, obviously, many years ago. We'll, uh, we'll continue to be there and uh, Chelsea in a couple of years, hopefully. <laughs> Some of the signs will have to be changed. But after a 44-year wait, Accrington Stanley are back in the Football League. Fraser Dainton, Sky Sports. After winning 1-0 yesterday, they're 12 points clear at the top of the conference with three games left to play. Kate Gifford reports. Accrington Stanley, who are they? Well, they're the conference champions and they're back in the Football League for the first time in 44 years. And thanks to yesterday's 1-0 win at Woking, there were just a few sore heads here at the Interlink Express Stadium this morning. <laughs> I think Accrington will be, will be waking up a little bit slowly today, uh, yeah, today and, uh, and probably feeling a little bit worse for wear. Uh, we had a few drinks on the way back on the on the team coach and then the, the, we got back to Accrington it was good because all the, the sporters coaches we all came back to the bar and everyone was together at the end of the night. We, we, we all the champions was on a few times I think by Queen and a few other cheesy football songs. It was great. Coming home from walking I think it took us about five hours and um, you know it was really good to come home on uh, a happy bus. The champagne must have been flowing. Well, it certainly was for most people, but uh, you know, I just had uh, half a glass, and uh, you know, I will celebrate hopefully, um, you know, at the end of the season. Stanley really will be milking their promotion. Forced to resign from the league in 1962 after going bust, they're now back with the big boys of League Two, and the whole town is delighted. None more so than another Stanley. I felt a, a little emotional and sentimental because uh, so I used to watch them when I was a young lad, you know, about 1958, so quite chill for really. Magic, get them up there, let's hope they can carry on and get on with the job because they're doing well. Absolutely delighted. Um, Stanley haven't been in, the last time Stanley were in league, I would have twinkled in my mum's eye. Milk, ugh, Swanny and Rush drinks, Ian Rush, yeah, and he said if I didn't drink lots of milk, when I grow up, I'm going to be good enough to play for Accrington Stanley. Accrington Stanley? Who are they? Exactly. No longer the butt of jokes, 12 points clear at the top of the table, Stanley really are the cream of the conference. It makes tomorrow's home clash a mere formality. We have a game tomorrow against Scarborough, but uh, I don't know if we'll be able to get a team together because uh, I've never seen as many drunken people in my life. If they can scrape a team together, no one will be asking who Accrington Stanley are from now on. Yeah, well done, Accrington Stanley. On to other news now. Completes a remarkable turnaround for the Lancashire Club, which had been best known by many people for their mention in the 1980s milk advert. Jodie Fielder reports. 
Despite nursing a hangover, John Coleman still made it out for his Sunday league team Rowan this morning, but probably not for much longer. After masterminding Stanley's return to the league, the manager will now have to put all his energy into keeping them there. Football's a difficult, a difficult uh, industry, and uh, sometimes you need a lot of luck, and we've had a bit of luck this season. Um, and it all has to click into place, and you know, we've got the basis of a good squad, we need to strengthen that now and kick on and hopefully have a good go next year. Yesterday's win at Woking ended Accrington's long exile from the league, and after life in non-league obscurity, it was an emotional day for the fans. 44 years, five days and three hours, and we're back in the league where we belong. A little bit of sparkle back in English football today. Something special happened today. We're going to win World Cup now. Stanley started here. The bit of magic started here. And the club's fairy tale rise is ahead of schedule. I made the thing that uh, you know if I couldn't get you up in in five years, I'd uh, I'd call it a day. But uh, I think I might just stop on a little bit longer now and you know see where we can go into the football league. Well, with the remarkable transformation complete, Aki Stanley can now be thought of for their football rather than... What was that advert again, John? I think it was more corner. Yeah, cheers. cheers. Now in the Premier League... ...motion to the Football League... ...at the Interlink Express Stadium later. ...ready conference champions. It means a return to the Football League after a 44-year absence and for everyone at the club, it's a dream come true. To the 2,000 people that come regular, I think it's absolutely brilliant. I mean, we've a lot of old fans that remember, you know, March 1962 when we went out of the league, and uh, I think for them it's like a, a, a fairy tale as it is for me. You know, I've been connected with the club, you know, in different capacities for a long while. It's uh, it's one of those it makes it more pleasing. The title win which could spark a major boost for the club's finances it's a step into the unknown to be honest I mean it, it has been for, for several years now we, we went up into the conference and we went full-time a couple of years ago and this this will be the same again but whatever happens we'll make sure we don't spend more money than we've got coming in and, and that, that's that's the way you've got to do it really for the long-term future of the football club and for the fans who regularly come through these turnstiles it still hasn't quite sunk in it's emotional it's so emotional you can't you can't put it into words it's uh, total fruition, total fruition. I've got a feeling that we'll do all right. I mean, all the teams that have gone up the last couple of years have done quite well. So uh, Stanley back in the Football League where we founded, uh, obviously many years ago, we'll, uh, we'll continue to be there and uh, Chelsea in a couple of years, hopefully. Some of the signs will have to be changed, but after a 44-year wait, Accrington Stanley are back in the Football League. Fraser in Sky Sports. Coming up, we'll... Champions of the Scottish Premier League that says it will never die. Accrington Stanley, one of the most famous names in football, is back in the big time. The players, supporters and indeed the whole town of Accrington are still celebrating their return to the Football League. It's a founder member but was thrown out 44 years ago with crippling financial debts. For all those years the club became something of a standing joke in football circles but now all that is at an end. Everywhere you go, if you say you're from Accrington, they all say Accrington Stanley, so it's well known, isn't it? Absolutely delighted. Um, Stanley haven't been in. Well, the last time Stanley were in the league, I would have twinkled in my mum's eye. I don't know, it's, such a, <laughs> it's a dream come true, isn't it? It's a fairy tale come true, isn't it, really? Yeah. <laughs> there are fairy tales, you see. <laughs> Well, one man is credited with rescuing Accrington Stanley. He's the chairman, Eric Wally, who even twice managed the club as they were in their non-league structure back to football. Well, I congratulated him earlier and asked him what this meant to the Lancashire Mill Town. Uh, to be honest, you know, it's the... Uh, obviously, it, it's an occasion that I think a lot of people, certainly in Accrington, were delighted after the... Uh, early 60s, certainly 1962, March, when the club went out of existence. I think the people of Accrington couldn't believe that, um, you know, it would happen. But uh, unfortunately, uh, the Football League accepted the resignation and uh, for a measly £62,000, Accrington went out of the league. Were you confident all season that you were going to be able to get back into the league this year? Uh, it was one of those, you know, situations you, you make statements and sometimes you regret them. But whether I thought we'd actually get back in, you know, I always hoped. And um, you've got to be an optimist, haven't you, at, uh, at this game. And, uh, you know, we've only been in the conference three years, but, um, you know, it's been certainly a, a happy time for the club. Now, you've achieved a lot so far back in the league. 
now that you're back, how far do you think you can go? Uh, I don't really know. You know, you, you look at the Wimbledon's of this world, of this world that went from the uh, non-league certainly up into the old first division. Then, you know, we don't know. We'll set a target, and uh, hopefully, we can achieve it. Well, congratulations and good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, that is it. I will be back with an update on today.